It's a great day for a walk. How are you all doing? I hope you're all still doing well. What is it now? Week 11 of the lockdown? Week 10, week 11? Something like that anyway. Today is the 4th of June 2020. And uh, going back out through the forest. Remember the last walk before the lockdown that I did was going across this direction. I'm going a slightly, slightly different route, but a few of you have said go back to Epping Forest. So I'm going to be going further than I've been on any previous lockdown walk. I've stayed within a kind of certain radius of home. And now I'm at the point where I can start to break further away. Still staying within the borough of Wolfham Forest though. And I'm going to head up through Chingford and hopefully end up right on the edge of London. There's a lot of good stuff in store today. So I'm just going to skirt around Damon Albarn's Hollow Ponds. There's a dedicated video on my channel here just about the Hollow Ponds, which I'll link to below. It's a particularly beautiful place at sunset. The Hollow Ponds is a really good place to come bat spotting. I think particularly on a summer's evening. I think they must be attracted by the flies that congregate above the water. So we're just going to go along this sort of wide gravel path here up to Snaresbrook Road and uh, to the right here is the location of the uh, of the Leightonstone Lido now buried beneath those trees and there is a video here where I go looking for the lost Lido of Leightonstone it is actually marked on an ord the Ordnance Survey map, so if you've got an Ordnance Survey map, it shows you where it was. When you consider all the, uh, the Lidos that, we, that we've lost over the years, this one I think was filled in in the 1980s. And actually we might be going near the location of another Lido up at Larkswood in Chingford, and that was also closed in the 1980s. They would be hugely popular today obviously not, <laughs> not during the pandemic when you look at the lidos that survived they're hugely popular like um brockwell park lido tooting lido london fields lido i think the hornsey lido is still open as well and back in my hometown high wickham the lido on the rye i believe is still open so it's a real shame real sort of uh short-sighted planning that was a curious little corner of the forest that, that I often overlook actually because it just sits between the roads but it's no less delightful than the more visited parts of the forest. This beautiful old tree here would have seen Edward North Buxton come past when he was writing his glorious Epping Forest guidebook in the 1880s. He would have remembered when all this was forest all connected without the roads a few scattered little villages here and there. I feel that when you walk through this lower part of the forest, which is a very narrow strip really, and it's kind of fractured with housing development, it's a really sobering view of what would have happened to the whole of Epping Forest had it not been preserved through the works of people like Edward North Buxton, who was uh, very influential. I've talked about him in a number of videos before, but it was from a very influential Quaker family who were involved in politics. One of his forebears was his father, his grandfather was one of the key uh, sort of abolitionists of slavery. Uh, one of them was the chair of the London County Council when it was formed. One, uh, one of them set up uh, the London Hospital. They're involved in the Truman's Brewery. They were involved in all sorts of things. They're also involved in banking as well. Uh, but as in his work as MP for Walthamstow, he kind of led the crusade to save Epping Forest. If you look at a lot of the old Epping Forest guidebooks, like uh, J.A. Brimble's London's Epping Forest, it doesn't even include any of this. For a lot of those people, the, the forest starts at Chingford, which is where I'll most likely be leaving the forest today. <laughs> but this is, uh, we're lucky to have what we do. The 6,000 acres, I think it is, or 2,500 hectares, of uh, woodland and plain and pasture that remains. This 
area here is marked on the Corporation of London map as Canada Plain. And this is known as Bullrush Pond for uh, fairly obvious reasons. I've usually uh, come this way in the winter and it's so lovely to see this mud all dried out. We've barely had any rain for like five or six weeks. This is uh, quite an experience in the winter, I can tell you, getting up here. And up the top here, you've got this really beautiful little patch of ground. A little bit of meadowland here with fantastic views over Walthamstow. It's also a really good view of the, uh, of the waterworks that sit at the end of Forest Road on the Woodford New Road there. And this is a great view across the Lee Valley here from this bridge across Forest Road. Buxton, writing in the 1880s, refers to this as Hagger Lane. So this wood here is known as Waterworks Wood. Fairly obvious reasons, but also because uh, there's a covered reservoir just to the right there. You saw me walk over the top of that in my last Epping Forest video. You can put a, a shot of that in here if you like. It's one of my ambitions to learn the names of all the parts of the forest. Because we just call it Epping Forest, don't we, as a whole. But of course, it covers quite a large area. You know, if you think it runs from Manor Park down there all the way up to Epping, it's quite a big old area. There's a lot of villages in between. It spans London into Essex. So all those parts of the forest have all got individual names. It would have meant a lot to the local people, you know. They'd have known Staples Hill and that would have been important for some reason and Fairmead Plain would have been important for another reason. St Thomas's Quarter and you know, Lippitz Hill and, you know, the Cuckoo Pits and the Cuckoo Brook and all these places. And... Uh, you know, I don't know enough names of the parts of the forest, so that's something that I really want to work on. Waterworks Wood is a new one for me here. And this bridge here, over the North Circular, gives us one of my favourite views in London. And now we pass through Walthamstow Forest. When Queen Victoria came to Chingford, I think it was in 1882, to declare Epping Forest the People's Forest. It really has felt like that during the pandemic, I think. A lot of people have been coming over to Epping Forest to seek kind of solace and refuge, which is what the forest often has represented for people, hasn't it? A place of escape. And when you look back in the past, that's often the What's happened in times of trouble is people have retreated into the woods and into the forests. You can see evidence of it here, further up, you see Loughton Camp and Amesbury Banks. Although we're not 100% sure of what their purpose was, one feeling is, is that it was a place that maybe people came to when there was troubles and they would even just use it as a place to kind of protect their livestock and protect their food storage uh, if there was uh, some sort of conflict or some sort of trouble happening. We go back to our roots. We came out of the forest and that's where we return to. Can you see the magpie there on top of the stone? This is a location that people often request I visit in the videos. I thought I had done actually, but perhaps I haven't. It's on my blog for sure. It's a stone that um, commemorates the association with this area with Gypsy Rodney Smith, who was born here at Woodford and he was a preacher, a travelling preacher. So here's a tree that shows evidence of lopping. I love uh, Rachel Lilly's description of the uh, lopped tree, the Pollard trees, as looking like wounded soldiers. And lopping is the old process of sort of woodland management where they would cut off branches to use for firewood and for building and it would affect the growth of the tree. 
One of, the, uh, one of the results of Epping Forest becoming the people's forest is that the commoners lost their lopping rights, so they couldn't come and gather wood in the forest anymore. It's a really good story about that whole thing of the commoners protecting their lopping rights when they were threatened by the landowners who tried to take away their rights. In return for their loss of lopping rights, the Corporation of London gave the people of Loughton Lopping Hall which is quite a lovely building on the high street there. So this is my map in Buxton's book. Beautiful maps by Stanford's. I think I'm just here near Rushy Plain, approaching, uh, I think that's where I am anyway. This is really lovely here. Look at this tree with all these ribbons and little colorful flags on it. And here we have Forest Kids Mail, notes for children. Isn't that lovely? Add more family members. Thank you for visiting our Tree of Hope. Isn't that lovely? So I forgot to mention my lunch. I've nearly finished it now. It's just a very simple cheddar, cheese and piccalilli sandwich on brown bread. Very delicious. And very similar to the sandwich I bought with me on my last Epic Forest walk. Which I, bet, I had Wensleydale cheese, which made me think of Wallace and Gromit. We just crossed over Oak Hill through this other little narrow strip of forest here. Not so many people in the forest today. I guess it's a Thursday afternoon and you've got people starting to go back to work now. Humphrey Repton's beautiful Highams Park Lake. Last time we walked over on the right hand side there, so today I think we'll take the path to the left. It's interesting, I was reading in Buxton the other night how it required um, another Act of Parliament after the 1878 Epping Forest Act. They needed a further Act of Parliament in order to purchase Hyams Park here, because I suppose it was the local authorities the local parish councils that must have bought the land, I don't know, but it was then managed by the Corporation of London. And at that point, local councils weren't allowed to purchase land to be essentially managed by a third party, the Corporation of London. So they had to create another Act of Parliament, which was, I think, in 1891. Before 1891, Hyams Park was not part of the forest, so there was like a little green lane that passed through, I think it's this path here actually, that connected the two halves of the forest together. So they needed to purchase this in order to incorporate it fully into Epping Forest. And the house to which this was the grounds is now Woodford County School for Girls. And here's the beautiful little River Ching I did a couple of really glorious walks along here last year. It's a really beautiful walk that. I made a, I made a video of my walk along the Ching so you can follow it and I'll link to that below. So we're just going to exit the forest here onto this suburban street and then we're going to climb Friday Hill. There's a great uh, greasy spoon cap over there here at Chingford Hatch. I'm not going to stop there today, I very much doubt it's open. It might be open for takeaway. I'm going to go over the roundabout this way. The clouds over Friday Hill look quite ominous, don't they? We had a few speckles of rain yesterday for the first time in about five or six weeks. Wouldn't be surprised if we got a little bit more later today as well. So Friday Hill is said to take its name from a fellow called Jack Friday, who owned the land here in the 15th century. It became better known though as the location of a large uh, post-war council estate, a kind of classic Homes for Heroes development. You can see around me here these really fine council houses. They're really built to 
a high specification. Kind of house that I grew up in actually. The biggest beer garden in Chingford. That's going to be an asset to them in the coming months if pubs are allowed to open their beer gardens. I've walked past this pub on a summer's evening and it's always looked really inviting and it always keeps me to kind of come back and come here for a pint. Friday Hill is uh, associated with one of the, the best stories of Epping Forest. Some of you will know the story and you'll be rolling your eyes, but it said that Charles II was out riding through the forest and he came to one of the halls here, one of the grand forest halls here on Friday Hill. And of course, as the king, he had to be fed. So he was brought out the best side of beef that the Lord of the Manor had. And uh, the king was so impressed with, the, uh, with this side of beef that he stood up, he took out his sword and he knighted it. And he said, arise, sir loin. The important part of the story is that it was a loin of beef, I should say. <laughs> so he came out himself, the best loin of beef. <laughs> and he said, arise, sir loin. And that gave its name to sirloin steak. That's where the name sirloin steak comes from. And when I first heard that, I thought, a bit of a shaggy dog story. It crops up all over the place. If you look up meaning of sirloin, where does sirloin come from, that's what you'll find. And here is the very grand Friday Hill house. This was, house was built in uh, 1836. I think it was the seat of the Heathcote family, who I suppose must have given their name to the Heathcote Arms in Leytonstone, I suppose. So now we're going to go across Pimp Hall Park, Chingford which is the first of a series of parks that we're going to pass through, which I hope are going to give us some quite pleasant views of the Lee Valley. Yes, with fantastic views looking there. I think that's looking over the Lee Valley. And here we're looking towards Epping Forest. Pimp Hall Park is what remains of a farm, Pimp Hall Farm. And I think there's a little bit of the structures of the farm. It was a, an Elizabethan farm. The farmhouse came down in the uh, in the 40s, I think, 30s or 40s. But there is a bit of it that survived, and I hope we're going to be able to get there as a nature reserve. I don't know if we can get to the nature reserve through the park. So you can't actually access the nature reserve via Pimpool Park. We're going to come up back along Friday Hill for a bit, but it's quite nice. I've not walked along this part of Friday Hill before. Here we go, just up here. There's, uh, there's also a recycling centre here. So there's a recycling and waste education centre over there. Wow. So this is a view of Pimp Hall with the dovecot and the barn in about 1920. It's amazing, isn't it? So here it tells us a bit about the past. The new manor was established in 1270 and the name comes from uh, Reynold Pimp, Lord of the Manor in 1500. So this must be the dovecot, 17th century dovecot. And what well, the information board tells us, it was used for breeding pigeons for eating. Young pigeons as well. And it could produce uh, 75 young pigeons a week for consumption. I shall look at dovecots differently in the future. I never had any idea that's what they were used for. They did like to eat a bit of pigeon pie back in those days, didn't they? So we'll just take this path here around the edge of the nature reserve and that should lead us to an exit to our next park, our next location. Couldn't find that other exit, so I'm going to have to go the long way around, all the way around to get back to the last two parks, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Larks Hall Road. I did think about going to um, Larks Hall Wood been on a previous walk and I will uh, link that video below. It's a really lovely spot that. And that's where there was a huge Lido once upon a time. I've always had an affection for this little parade of shops here. I've usually come past here sort of on like a Saturday evening. I don't know why, there's something really charming about this little parade here. Chingford Infant School here is a locally listed building. Built in uh, 1856. Barnish Seafood. I've never had anything from there. 
I did used to love a tub of cockles when I was a kid, but I always like to have a recommendation, really. Can anyone recommend Barney's Seafood? Cockles, whelks, chilli and mussels. Shells on prawns, winkles, jelly deals, dressed crabs, New Zealand mussels, all the good stuff, roll mops. That'd be one of my treats when I went shopping with my mum when I was a kid, when I was little. And we used to come out of Tesco's in, in High Wycombe and there'd be a seafood store just outside the, the entrance to Tesco's. And mum would get me a little tub of, uh, little tub of cockles. And I'd, I'd eat the cockles and I loved them so much that I would drink the vinegar that was left at the end. <laughs> be nothing left in that tub. And then carried on that habit until I was 18, until I left, <laughs> until I left Wickham. Yeah. I think it might be because my mum was from Portsmouth originally, you know, when she was a little girl, she lived by the sea. I don't know. This is a grand old pile here. I think it was originally a, a hotel and sort of coaching in. Now it's a prezzo. It's a building with a lot of stories, I think. Here's the ever helpful heritage plaque, the Bull and Crown, Grade 2 listed building. Erected in 1899 by Taylor and Walker and designed in French Second Empire style. It was built to cater for the vast number of visitors to Epping Forest. It replaced an 18th century inn. There you go. It's Chingford High Street up there. I really love Chingford. I've got an enormous amount of affection for it. So many of my forest walks start or end or pass through Chingford. There's the wonderful assembly rooms up there and the church. It's really lovely. Another great view from the top of the hill here at the King's Head pub looking down over the Lee Valley. I'm not going down there today, I'm going to go this way down the Ridgeway. This is obviously the, uh, the posh bit of Chingford. It's quite a grand building over there, isn't it? I shall have to look that up when I get home. It's called the Ridgeway for very literal reasons that it runs along a ridge on one side of the Lee Valley. So this is great, the entrance to Ridgeway Park. It's got a good story behind it for me. So back when, uh, when I first moved to Leytonstone, some time ago now, I wanted to come out into the rump of the forest with the family that first summer. And we've been around the hollow ponds and once the flats, and we've been around the bit of the forest I walked through earlier, that lower bit of the forest. We want to go deep into the forest. No maps, of course, or anything, you know me. And so we just got on the W16 bus, and I thought, well, the forest starts at Chingford, the deep forest, the rump of the forest, the big bit of the forest. So we just got the W16, and I thought, well, it'll be obvious once you get off the bus, the forest will be obvious. <laughs> of course, we got off the W16 bus at Chingford Mount Cemetery back there, you know, you're a, a way away from the forest there. So then it was a boiling hot day and we just went wandering around. I mean, my youngest son was, was in a pram. He was under, under a year old. My eldest son then would have been three. It was a boiling hot day, really, really hot day. And so we ended up in, in, in this park here. And you know, it's like you've got little kids. We thought, well, it's not Epping Forest, but this will suit them. There's a playground and there's a lovely little model railway over there which was going around and they loved that and you could, you could, I think you could ride it. No trains running today. So it's got a really lovely association for me. Here we have Mansfield Park. Leaping deer on the gates here. Wow, what incredible view of the reservoirs here from Mansfield Park. Apparently this was once communal grazing land. That's what Mansfield is said to mean. Grazing land held in common. These reservoirs here provide something like 20% of London's drinking water. I think this is the perfect place to end this walk today, up here on the, uh, on the very edge of London, in the northeast corner of London, overlooking the Lee Valley with a beautiful view of the reservoirs. 
Well, I've got to walk home now. <laughs> About four or five miles. I'm just going to take the most direct route possible. So thanks for joining me on this beautiful walk here. And uh, I look forward to seeing you uh, on the next walk, wherever that may be. That's how I do those walking shots, in case you were wondering. <laughs>